Hello everybody, this is Fernando for Godzilla Movie News. Yet another entry when it comes to my Cryptids and Monsters channel. This time I wanted to focus on what I consider to be one of the most, I guess you could call it, ethereal or very hardest to describe type of cryptid out there. And this has to do with the concept that's a uh, cryptid that's not exactly like a spirit, but still pretty much has all the similar traits of something like that. And what I'm talking about is a cryptid known as the Genius Loki. And this one is, I uh, came about actually, I started to find out about it when I was watching recently the movie Session 9. Quick little side note on that, if you haven't seen that movie Session 9, by all means, see that movie. It is one of the best films I have ever seen on a psychological level. Uh, this is, it's, it's considered, I guess, a horror movie, but it's not a traditional horror movie where there's jump scares and visceral type imagery, um, you know, gore, blood, horror, stuff like that. No. Instead, this plays on a psychological level, much like, say, a Silent Hill game would. It's all the little parts adding up to a whole that create a very creepy experience. And part of the movie, I won't make any spoilers in it, but part of the movie focuses on essentially what I'm going to talk about here. So, again, go see that movie. Highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it, it's available on Netflix for free. And I'm sure other places like Amazon and Redbox and so forth, I mean, they'll probably have it as an easy download for about a buck or two. So, highly recommend it. Anyways, the Genius Loki actually has been around since hundreds, hundreds of years, the concept of it at least. And essentially what it is, is think of it like a spirit of some sort, but instead of the spirit randomly floating around, it's actually stuck to one place. And the concept behind the Genius Loki is that it's either a protective spirit, or in more modern, um, in this modern more era, it's more of a destructive, uh, malicious type spirit. And I keep saying the word spirit, but it's not really a type of spirit in the sense like the Western world thinks. Instead, it's more like an entity, something that exists, but is so intangible, so ethereal. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't sense it. But there it is in the background, essentially manipulating or doing things without you realizing it. I guess the closest concept you could think of here is if you've ever seen the the uh, comics f featuring Loki, actual Loki from the Thor comics, he actually plays kind of like a genius Loki where he hangs around people and slowly but surely starts manipulating them on a minds on their mindset to do the things that he wants. And that's the kind of thing that we have here. Now, in the classical era of Roman religion, it looks like the Genius Loki was a protective spirit, but more along the lines of like a literal being taking the shape of something that we know, such as a snake or even something as uh, tangible as, say, a, a stone or a, uh, some kind of bowl, uh, a concrete bowl, something like that. The point is that the spirit was stuck at a place. And it, it inhabited that place, and anybody that came about that place was essentially somebody that the Loki was going to meet um, and start manipulating them, whether for good or for bad. Now, when it comes also to the genius Loki, um, it's stuck at this place, so if you happen to, say, work at a place that something like this is about, or are just traveling to some location, and you happen to, your travels happen to to make crossways with the genius Loki, then essentially you're going into its realm, and that's where it starts to, um, I guess, hang around you. Now, the genius Loki is also a pretty unique cryptid in a sense that it apparently um, is an area where there's a strong, I guess, energy of some sort. Um, if you believe in the ley lines, uh, that's where the genius Loki tends to habitate because of the strong crossways of energy within the earth that allow it to become a focal point of sorts. In Asia, for example, um, these kind of quote-unquote spirits are commonly found on shrines, uh, spirit houses, even in businesses, apparently. 
and here in the Western world, um, anything generally involving again the aforementioned ley lines or popular spots involving, um, let's say, older relics. Um, those that, that uh, that's the kind of stuff that uh, that makes apparently Genius Loki a fortitude for them to hang out on. Now again, um, the concept of Jinsoki can be both positive and negative. For the most part, it can be considered a protective slash guardian spirit. But in other cases, especially in the more modern era, it takes a more malicious, uh, malevolent type force where it, again, it doesn't, it can't make decisions for people, but it certainly tries to influence them to do things they normally wouldn't do. And again, the movie uh, Session 9 beautifully, beautifully portrays something like that. And again, if you want to see uh, what could be a genius looking in action, um, go see that movie, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And unfortunately, there's not really much, I guess, uh, like artwork or pictures or images of anything like that because again this thing is so ethereal it's so intangible you can't again I mentioned this again you can't see it you can't smell it you can't hear it you can't sense it but this is something that is still apparently just you know habitating some local areas and if you happen to cross it it may decide to let's say uh, see what it can do with you, and another, but otherwise it may not. It's an intelligent being of some sort. It could be, um, who knows, a pl a f a something as far as beings that are in interdimensional, uh, that are in such a realm that we can't even c conceive how they exist, but there they are. Um, I find that actually to be quite creepy because here you are, you could be just an innocent person just walking about one day. Let's say you go to a town for the first time. You're doing a little bit of tourism. You maybe happen to come across a certain part of the forest unknownst to you. That's actually a corner of a of one of these ley lines. And then you're in that realm. And what makes it even more creepy is the fact that these things are apparently stuck at that place. They can't roam about. They are, for whatever reason, eternally stuck there. And that tends to create an instant image of this thing being bound and itchy and potentially angry and just um, you know just wanting to get out but can't and so if it has to stay in this certain area forever it might as well make the best use of it and what happens when you have a very powerful being that's let's say a little angry uh, by being stuck on there what do you think they're gonna do they're gonna essentially take it out on whoever crosses their path that's the kind of stuff that kinda creeps me out on stuff like this but again I don't know if these things exist I'm just I just came across them recently when I was looking up stuff on session 9 after I saw the movie and so I came across this concept and I thought it would make a perfect cryptid video for us but let me know I mean if anybody else out there knows of these locations um, maybe somebody friend of a friend family member some co-worker anybody that you know of that knows to you know of an area that you don't go to because these things tend to have uh, bad of these areas tend to have a bad effect on people that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about here but let me know so anyways that's another entry into my cryptids and monsters video genius Loki again go see session 9 you'll absolutely enjoy it one of the best movies you've ever seen so thanks again everybody take care